war, kid? Oh, it's war. Christmas is canceled. What's going on, YouTube? It's your boy Rio, and I am back for the second in my Rio React series. For those of you new to my channel, my name is Rio Robinson. I do a channel called Rambling with Rio that's usually a sports channel centered and focused around the Washington Commanders. Tonight, I will be recapping and giving my thoughts, analysis, and takeaways from Power Book Four Forces season finale. As you saw from the trailer, Tommy said it was time to cancel Christmas and it was really, it, it took a whole season to build up to it, but it was definitely Christmas canceling season as the episode got right to the shits off rip. Like the episode opens up with Vic calling Tommy, trying to sound like a tough guy. Vic, you're not that guy, man. I promise you, you're not that guy. You're not that guy, pal. Trust me, you're not that guy. And clearly the Flins thought Tommy was some Joe Schmo motherfucker that pulled up to Chicago that they could just fuck with and trifle with <laughs> however they see and fit. But that that's that's not the that's not the move, man. And if we go from that to immediately Jannard calling Diamond and like, yo, what's up, man? I need to parlay with you, man. We need to meet up. And Diamond already heard the conversation between Blackston and Jannard in the basement of his barber shop. So he's kicking it at the shop with his girl, Adrian, who I do not trust at all because she's there to, like, you know what I'm saying, put his head on her shoulder, oh, cry, cry on your shoulder and tell me all your sweet nothings, Diamond. But she's still fishing for a story, too. She, Ooh, is that the person you can't trust from the other day? You've been acting so different since you've taken that phone call. That She's super sus, but I think there's feelings there, but at the same time, she has a job to do. And Diamond is her kind of her lover, but he's also still her story. So that's something to keep an eye on for season two. But yeah, Diamond immediately knows his brother's on some fuck shit because as intelligent as his brother seems to be moving, he's moving like a low-budget version of Cameron and Peyton Fool. And... Diamond knew what the time it was. He was like, yo, pack your shit. Let's go. I don't know why she's questioning a street nigga when he tells her that. But they go and they get low in his SUV and Blackston and them run up in the barbershop with they teat toting. And Diamond had that look on his face like, okay, these niggas want me to be, they want me to be my old self for real now. Like, he heard the words of Jannard and Blackston, but now that he saw it in action, it's like, okay. Like Tommy said, it's time to cancel Christmas on motherfuckers. So we go from that to, you know what I'm saying, the the Irish, the four horsemen from Dublin, the hitters that they brought from, they brought from Ireland to come get Tommy. And we see the Flins and we see them having one big hoorah one big party to get ready for war because on some game of thrones style shit like we're gonna all dr have a drink and fuck fest before war takes place and that shit immediately backfired and they're sleeping on tommy i guess they're sleeping on the fact that he got the serbs involved because while they were partying tommy already had a woman plant he already had a woman planted on their party to get one of the horsemen out, and they got him the fuck out of here, strangled him, and hung him upside down like a fucking animal to send a message to him. And I think that's when these Dublin hitters and the Flins who didn't know figured out, all right, this Tommy motherfucker is real. Because Tommy did that shit himself. Like, Tommy was right there, ready to go with the absolute shits. And you see Tommy calling shots as the general of sort to the to Merkovich's Serbian army and shit. They speak in Serbian around him. I like how Tommy commented, like, hey, don't be speaking that shit around me. I don't trust y'all. And Merkovich told him straight up, yeah, I told him to listen to you and do whatever you say. But if you cross me or betray me in any way to kill you, you know, I like that transparency between them. Even though Merkovich decides to snake Tommy ultimately in the episode when this bitch nigga Jannard comes to him. But we're going to get to... We're going to get to Jannard in just a second, man.
because Gennard is a fucking character, man. For some reason, I just knew he was not gonna die. Like I knew, like Gennard's character, like he's a fucking idiot. Like he's like Kane from Power Book Two. Like he's a jackass, and he moves real sloppy, egotistical, and off emotion of rather than logic. But his character arc does not seem fully fleshed out. So it definitely didn't feel like he was going to die. Like even when it when Diamond gets the gun pointed to him, which we're going to get to in a second. Like, But Diamond finds out that his brother's coming to get him. So, you know, he goes ahead and nips the first bit of that in the bud. He goes and takes out Blackston. He ties him up, beats the shit out of him with a bat. And Blackston's like, yeah, you turned into a bitch. You ain't the old Diamond. You ain't out here catching bodies no more. And then Diamond said, yeah, all right, nigga. Shoots him in the head and then does some boss OG mafioso shit and leaves his body in Gennard's fucking living room on this man's couch. Like, yo, I ain't even know Diamond was built like that. <laughs> I ain't even know Diamond was out here like that in these streets, bro. That shit, I know a lot of that shit hit me. I like, okay, Diamond is for real. Like, I don't even want to know who this old Diamond was because my guy, that was brutal. That was fucking brutal. So then we move on from there to Gennard. At that point, Gennard is shook out of his fucking shoes and he starts running around trying to pull strings like a Dollar General. James St. Patrick with no logic really involved. I don't know how he has the clout to do these things. He somehow arranges meets with the Serbs, with the Flins, and he's trying to get everybody on his side. Yeah, man, we need to team together to get Tommy, man, because he knows his brother is coming for that ass and he's running around. Yo, we got to go. We got to go get Tommy, man. Uh, I got, I got a pipeline and you know what I'm saying? Like, I need you guys on my side, like on some real, real ridiculous shit. And somehow this man is just calmly arranging meetings with people who do not fuck with him. And he's doing everything he can to save face because he knows Christmas is about to be canceled on his punk ass. Then we jump to the hospital scene. D-Mac is fighting for his life in the hospital. And JP sends Tommy back to the crib to go get some documents at Miriam's house, at the grandma that just died's house. And when he goes there, he thinks a crackhead or somebody's trifling around the house. Well, he was correct. That crackhead happened to be his mother, Kate Egan. Her junkie ass is back in town and... She's there for all the wrong reasons. Like, she's acting, oh, I'm here to see my other son. I want to meet him. I want to meet him. But she's there rifling through the walls, beating the fucking house to death, looking for some shit. But it was really nice to see Tommy interact with his mom again because even though she's a fucking idiot, like, every time they interact, it's hilarious. He's like, ma? It's like, oh, Tommy, of course you're fucking alive. Like, those, like, you live for those type of scenes. Like, there were a couple moments of comedic relief in this episode. But other than that, this episode was all smoke. Like, the other funny moments when Kate goes to the hospital to see JP and D Mac. And when they walk out the room, D Mac's like, who is this old white bitch in the fucking room with me? He's like, that's your grandma. He was like, I got an old white bitch for a grandma. <laughs> like, that shit had me fucking rolling but yeah man kate gets to meet jp you know they have their little emotional moment or at least emotional from his side i don't really know if she really has feelings she loves tommy in this twisted way i don't really know if she really gives a fuck about jp but she's about to pretend that she does tommy gives her a stack and tells her to leave like i know this is what you're here for because you know how kate get down bro she's just trying She's trying to get some more crack rock in her system, you know. But Tommy places one of the Serbs there to protect D-Mac, and he goes about his business. And then we can start talking about deaths in the episode. So after Diamond kills Blackston, I mean, we've seen that coming because I didn't see Gennard. I didn't see Gennard as a character that was going to die yet because I said, I also predicted Walter Flynn would die in the episode. I was wrong about that. And it's also weird to me how this motherfucker has been like sick as hell, cancerous as fuck the whole season. 
That nigga ain't coughed the whole episode. He was just war tested and ready to go. All of a sudden, you know, war got his fucking system cleared out. I don't know. Courtney Kemp, you had to explain some of that. Like war just cured his cancer all of a sudden. But yeah, other than that, though, you know, we got the D-Mac fighting for his life situation. We got Tommy scrambling around. Oh, deaths. Okay. I can tell when a death flag is happening in the show. Like usually a character that's about to die says some shit that shows you they're about to die. And Liliana has been saying shit like that this whole season. And I love Liliana and it makes it, it, it's, it hurt. It pains me in my fucking chest that Liliana died, especially that bitch ass Claudia was the one who did it. But, she said for the final time, she said to the, she made the mistake that got her killed. She told the cook, she told the chef, I've seen Tommy this way. You need to get the fuck out of town. I'm going to give you some money. You need to leave immediately. This chef girl is not from the streets. So she took her precious time and she ain't leave till the next day. And you know how this goes. She's not from this life. She don't understand when you say you need to leave right now, that you need to get the fuck out of town right now. So Liliana, and she said, what, what about you, Liliana? And Liliana said, I'm a soldier. I chose this life. That was one of the most obvious, clear death flags. Like, they were just screaming, this character is going to fucking die this episode. And it was at her own doing it was to her detriment her actions led to her death but she was loyal to the very end but it hurt my soul i love liliana her fine ass i swear i wanted tommy to get with her bro like every episode that nobody went smack at liliana it hurt my heart she's the baddie on the show bro damn man r.i.p liliana so let's get to how she did die so shit goes down yeah well first claudia pulls up on the chef because Liliana sent her out of town and she didn't leave quick enough. And of course the chef's going to be like, I'll tell you whatever the fuck you need to know. Just don't kill me. And even though the chef is now expendable too, but Claudia is pulling strings. She's puppeteering amidst all of this war and smoke that is going on in Chicago. Claudia, first of all, Claudia is Bitch ass knew that Tommy didn't set up her brother. Like, let's let's keep let's call a spade a spade. She knew Tommy had nothing to do with that shit. She knew Tommy wasn't hurting Gloria, and she was the only Flynn that really knew what Tommy was fucking capable of. But she's puppeteering behind the scenes. She's working out her pipeline. She's already planning everything out, letting niggas know, oh, this is my product. This isn't Tommy's product. She spoke to Janar. She spoke to one of the horsemen about it. And she's definitely out here forcing, like, forcing her pipeline and forging her own lane because she's pretending like she's playing the part of the I'm here for my family thing. But she is completely working for herself. And she gets the chef and she tells the chef. What is Tommy's weakness? And we all know Tommy's weakness is fucking family. Honestly, I wish it could have been like Kate Egan that fucking died. Like, I wish they got Kate. I wish they kidnapped her. Tommy would have been like, fuck it, shoot that bitch. <laughs> like, it would have been so much easier. But for the sake of the show, they got JP. They kidnapped JP. And we get to the big showdown at the end. The season finale showdown. You know what I'm saying? All of Walter Flynn and his goons, the Flynn children, and they come up with this plan to kind of throw him off where Diamond is holding Tommy at gunpoint. And he's holding him at gunpoint, he's pretending like he's going to shoot him. Like, I'll trade you a life for a life. I'll give you Tommy. You give me my bitch-ass brother, which automatically forces tension between Gennard CBI soldiers because they're like, wait, you tried to come at diamond and split up the gang they start a shootout they start the shenanigans at, at the end of the day i hate how that looks by the way like all these fucking mobsters and gangsters did they just had to make the black one they had to make the niggas look stupid and have to fuck up the whole thing oh look at us about to shoot it out with each other when these white people ain't even here for us like <laughs> they had to make us look crazy but anyway diamond goes at like he, they release Gennard to him after they start the shoot and diamond goes after him and Tommy, Vic Flynn, reckless ass, goes after Tommy. It's a shoot 'em up, bang bang ass scene. Sick ass Walter lives. 
Pauly. Speaking of Pauly, the consigliere of the Flynn family, I'm thinking that this man is out here scheming against Walter on some, I'm going to get Walter taken. Now it feels like he's been pulling strings and putting actions into work. He's not. He's just doing his fucking job. He's just a loyal fucking consigliere. I thought he was really going. I thought he was about that life. He not. He just going along with everything else. But the ultimately the kids find out. Well, Victor finds out that Tommy had nothing to do with Gloria's death. And while all this shootout and shit is taking place, Liliana pulls up with the chopper. Pulls up with the yapa from behind the Flynn cars and she's taking out their hitters one by one and she's creeping up and she looks to be creeping up on Pauly after he lets JP out the car and bitch ass Claudia Flynn shoots her. Looks like she hits her right either above or below the clavicle, but right in the chest. And we knew from that second you get hit from a chopper you from that close in that area, like it's over for you, and you even hear Tommy yell out her name, Liliana. Like, yo, that joke got me mad emotional, bro. That shit got me mad sad. And then Tommy, when he said, "When I find out who does this, it's over for him," the look on Claudia's face, like she was fucking shook it. Like it's over for her when Tommy finds out he did that because Liliana. Tommy didn't come to Chicago looking for a partner, but he found a true. Ride or die fucking partner. She was a baddie, bro. She could have been bae. You should have clapped them cheeks when you had the chance, Tommy. R.I.P. and pull one out for Liliana, man. She was a fucking real one, man. So they're going to have to find another supporting female actress to fit this role or some type of role on the show because Liliana was a fucking real one. She added comedic balance to the show. She was funny, she was sexy, she was cool, and she was fucking thugged out and relentless. You know what I'm saying? R.I.P. to a real one. So our big deaths on the episode, Blackston, Liliana, and these horsemen guys, but there wasn't no crazy death. D-Mac made it, you know? But all the Egans, J.P., D-Mac, Kate, Diamond had his brother at gunpoint. He even shot the bullet next to him, and fucking Jannar looked like he seen the spirit of Jesus Christ himself. <laughs> he was shook as shit. He was like, look, bro, we're going to split up CBI. Diamond better than me. I would have fucking killed my brother at that point because that nigga tried to kill you, bro. And he will probably try to kill you again because he's that stupid and sick of a nigga. But Diamond ended up saying, look, we're going to split it up. I'm going to take this side of the city. You're going to take this side of the city. And we have nothing to do with each other anymore. And yep, so CBI is now split. Uh, the Flins are now split because the kids know their father ain't shit, and he put out a hit on Gloria, and his actions were the reason why Gloria was killed. And Vic should feel stupid because Tommy tried to save him. He gave him the keys to a car to get the fuck out of town, and this motherfucker got in his regular car and he got his girlfriend killed. So Vic, your death's in your hands. I hate to say it, Liliana, your death is in your hands too because you. You did the action that led to your death, and it sucks. You know, power never has happy endings, but what power does do, it does a good job of leading into what's going to happen next season and what's going to happen in the rest of this Marvel Cinematic Universe of drugs that 50 Cent is concocting here with the power series. So I, I, I was expecting maybe a cameo from someone from Power Book 2 Ghost or something. So what they ended up doing was at the end of the episode, they ended up flashing to New York. And after, no, before they flash to New York, before they flash to New York, they show a cop and they show some people that are going to be looking for Tommy. They're going to be on Tommy's case next season. She happens to be Dre from The Shy playing this main officer that's going to be looking for Tommy. Then they flash to New York and our favorite Fed, our favorite Fed with our favorite New York accent, Blanca, punk ass. Has a case, a, file, a case file with the four horsemen and all that. And we know soon she's going to get this picture of Tommy Egan that was populated to the Chicago officers that are now looking into the case. She ends up running into Sullivan and Medina. They talk about how Sachs went on them and flipped on them in court and 
all types of shit. And our connection from ghost to force is that Blanca punk ass who's now who's already seen Tariq on the footage of Mecca's penthouse. She is now going to see a picture of Tommy Egan alive and well and mixing up shit in Chicago. So in one season, uh, Tommy's managed to come through Chicago and fuck the mob boss that runs the town's son's girlfriend, uh, help get uh, be responsible in getting her killed, go to war with them, get the Serbs involved, kill some Serbs, use the Serbs, Kill some CBI members, work with some CBI. He has turned the whole fucking city upside down in one season, and he has his eyes set on the entire map. Diamond's like, we're not messing with Dahlia. Tommy said, I'm not messing with Dahlia either. They open the map. He circles that whole motherfucker like, look, we're going to run the whole map. So it looks like he wants to be the guy who runs the whole situation. We ain't just pushing product no more. Motherfucker's going to pay me to push products in my city because Tommy's about to run Chicago going forward into the next season. And I am very intrigued into how these shows and timelines are going to intertwine when it comes to this and power book two ghost. I'm excited to see where they're going. Courtney Kemp, congrats on a successful first season of this. You know, I, I can't wait to see the Canaan show too, but the Canaan show is on a different timeline. I'm kind of pressed to see the current timeline. I want to see what Tariq and them doing next season. And I want to see the reuniting of Tariq and Tommy. And I want to see the grand reveal. Because I don't care what nobody says, James St. Patrick, Ghost is not fucking dead, and he set all of this shit up to a T, and it's going to come out at some point. But that's all I got right now. I'm putting a bow on Power Book 4, Force, first season, Tommy and company they canceled Christmas, but they also lost a real one, Mrs. Liliana, in the process. That's all I got for you right now. You can expect more stuff like this coming up on the channel. Game reactions, show reactions, movie reactions, reviews, more stuff like that. If that's your bag, I'll have that in separate playlists for you. And I'm also going to be continuing my Sports Washington Commanders content as usual. But until next time, deuces. <laughs>